Hello and welcome to this Oda episode of the Eternal Law. On the last Oda episode, we saw the Takeda begin their onslaught on South Shinano, capturing the castle by sending a huge army into battle, an immediate siege assault. On the battlefield, the Takeda just had too many heavy infantry to deal with, and the Oda's men were gradually cut down one by one, until finally the Takeda were able to take the Tenshu and end the battle in their favour. Taking revenge, Takeyama's army captured North Shinano, a quick surprise defeat for the Takeda. Then the Takeda navy attacked the Oda navy on the waters south of Japan and was royally defeated, losing all of its ships, whilst the Oda lost none. Now the Oda stand ready to try and take back South Shinano, let's see if they succeed. Is it better? Is it worse? What difference is there to living under the Takeda to the Oda, or even the Kiso? Under all, we're expected to lay down our lives for our clan. You all sit humbled by the sacrifice the Oda made to try and protect us. But protect us from what? If they hadn't killed Shingen, we could have lived under his famous rule of law. Takeda Province is the happiest in the land. Instead, we have martial law on the knowledge that another battle for this town is inevitable. These politicians are all lies. So here is the situation with the Oda in the summer of 1553. South Shinano has been taken by the Takeda as we can see, and the Oda have forces waiting to retake it. Here are the Takeda forces that were remaining from the battle for South Shinano. There's quite a lot of them and they're quite heavy. And they appear to be heading up here towards North Shinano, where the Oda have forces lying in ambush led by Takeyama Munayuri and uh, Takigawa Kiyunori inside the castle. You can see here, I'm moving Takeyama into an ambush position south of the castle. This is basically to counteract the fact that we have inferior numbers to the Takeda at this point, so we can only really defeat them with some sort of ambush. Now I have my nearby ninja go and scout out what's going on in Kai, the Takeda home province. We can see there's a massive Takeda army stationed at the castle, so this is a new element to be worried about. It's led by Takeda Nobushige. In the past we saw that Takeda Nobushige was down in the southern Takeda territories that they were, where, where they were at war with the Tokugawa. So the fact that they've moved them back into Kai suggests they're starting to get more worried about what we're doing than what the Tokugawa is doing. Which is useful for us, because it means the Tokugawa might be able to make some advances. Now you can see here there's an enemy Metsuke down near Kai. And because I'd spotted him, I'm moving my ninja away to avoid the risk that the Metsuke in the end turn sequence will come and arrest my ninja. Even though it's a high level ninja, he's difficult to arrest, but it's possible. So I've got my ninja well out of the way, and now it's time to think about taking South Shinano back. You can see I have two armies here, one led by our daimyo Oda Nobuhide, and the other by our true hero Oda Nobunaga. And he has the Oda main force, our heaviest army. And he marches into South Shinano and sees the Takeda have left absolutely no one to guard the castle. They obviously didn't know about Nobunaga and Nobuhide's armies because they were in fact hidden in the forests on the road there. So I'm able to sneak down and just take the castle with ease in an auto-resolved battle. And there we go, the province is now ours once again. I'm sure the people are rejoicing, and in fact they have no resistance to invasion, which shows that they actually uh, did want to go back to the Oda side, or at least they hadn't got used to the Takeda enough to think that it's not worth the hassle of going back to Oda. But still, this huge Takeda army in the area could very easily turn around and come and take South Shinano back from us a second time, and destroy Nobunaga's force in the process, so I need to be very careful. I'm moving Nobuhide's army down to provide reinforcements, and I'm also going to start adjusting the strategic formation here, moving forces in and out of the castle to maximize the map troops we have available, and to maximize the potency of the ambushing force outside the castle. So here we're in the end turn sequence, we can see the Takeda army, led by Takeda Nobushige, has moved up and laying siege to North Shinano. Bad news. Reinforcements led by Takeda Yoshinobu were coming up to support the siege, and if they had reached the siege point, North Shinano surely would have fallen and Kiyonori would be dead. However, Takeyama's force ambushes the Takeda reinforcements before they can reach the battlefield. This means we have an opportunity to destroy the Takeda army's reinforcements and then use Takeyama's forces to reinforce our men inside the castle, completely turning the situation around on Nobushige's army. Let's head into the ambush and see what we can do. Watch, men. Watch as the Takara army marches north to its doom. Noble General Takayama is ready to ambush them, while the men of Makawa have already begun to move to the south. Now that we have the enemy diverted, their home province is weak. Between Oda and Tokugawa, the jaws of the dragon, the Takada shall be crushed. My only regret is that we couldn't have taken those bold Takada lands for ourselves. And 
and so the ambush begins. The Takata forces in their marching column are attacked on both sides by the Oda army. Let's see how they react. First of all, they take all of their cavalry, which was riding at the head of the column, and they divide it up, sending the biggest segment of it towards the uh, the Oda main force led by Takayama on this side of the battlefield. However, they find themselves running straight into Oda's flank guards with their spear units and get engaged in a fight which is not favourable to them. So these enemy heavy cavalry are going to start taking casualties right from the beginning. The enemy's main infantry body was trying to escape the ambush rather than engage it. They were running away from the ambushing point. You can see from the other perspective the Oda force is closing in behind them as the Takata force pushes away towards the north. Over here you can see the enemy had so many cavalry units they were starting to get around some of our spear units and getting in behind the uh, Oda lines but luckily I had reserve spear units prepared for just such a situation and managed to get them in place to stop the enemy from attacking Takayama's position. And these uh, I think enemy Yari pirate cavalry were going down with ease against these Yari samurai. Over here you can see the enemy's heavy cavalry is still engaged with our Yari Samurai here as well. So they are in big trouble. Those guys are going to be going gradually, gradually worn down just by that fight because they are not in an advantageous situation. Back over here you can see the enemy infantry has finally turned and tried to engage us. This unit of Yayashigaru has been completely surrounded in the process and is now trying to escape from that situation. But they're getting bunched up because they're just too surrounded. Now I get this warning that uh, Takayama is in danger. This is because one of the enemy's cavalry units has finally managed to get around all of our guards and get to Takayama himself. Uh, the enemy unit in question is Light Naginata Horsemen, which are extremely effective at taking down officers because they're fast. Uh, there's no escaping them, as you can see here. Takayama's trying to run away because he has a disadvantage in this fight, but he can't escape. I try running uphill to try and uh, get away, but that makes things even worse. However, because I'm going uphill, it does slow the enemy down, as well as slowing me down, which means I have more time to pull in forces to go and help Takayama. Outside, you can see the enemy's heavy infantry is starting to engage with these Naginata Ashigaru. Uh, that's an advantageous fight for the enemy, but it won't be that way for long, because you can see over here the enemy's infantry are starting to get surrounded and overwhelmed. This is the only area of the battlefield where the enemy are doing well. It's more uh, heavy Katana Samurai fighting with Naginata Ashigaru. These Ashigaru just have to hold on long enough for the other fights to be won, so support can come to take out those Katana Samurai. So let's head back over and see how Takayama's getting on. He didn't die in this engagement, he came very close to death. Most of his bodyguards perished in this fight. However, you can see some Yari Samurai have come to the rescue and have broken up the formation of the enemy's cavalrymen and now they're just being swiped off their horses left, right and centre and the enemy cavalrymen try to disperse and get out of there. You see here some enemy Yari Samurai used the confusion to come in and try and join this fight but now they've been completely surrounded. They're being attacked by Katana Samurai here, against which they are weak so they won't last for long. And so this area of the battlefield has been cleared of enemies, which means all of these units here are now going to pile into the middle and start taking part in the other little engagements going on. Here's one such engagement, you can see some enemy Katana Samurai have been bunched together and surrounded by Shimashigaru. It's quite a strange sight actually. Here the enemy have a very heavy presence. This is where most of their uh, Yari Samurai and heavy infantry are. They're fighting with units of the Oda, which are of similar quality which means really both sides are just kind of taking one for one losses. Neither side has a distinct advantage in this situation. Uh, however, we are going to gradually be surrounding the enemy now that we have so many free units. So these guys are going to get demoralized by that situation. Back over here you can see that the, where the Oda's forces are massed, the massed Oda Ashigaru have surrounded so many Takada men that they're actually just, well, wiping out most of their army now. I believe the enemy general, Takada Yoshinobu, is in there. You can see him just at the top. And I think he uh, did perish in that little engagement there. Some of the enemy units begin to retreat from the field and are cut down as they go. Many of the enemy units were so isolated that once they realized a lot of their army was destroyed, they weren't willing to try and reform or fight on. They lost morale very easily. And you can see the ones that were just about trying to escape are being cut down because they lost their focus on the uh, fights going on immediately in front of them. And so a general retreat ensues for the Takeda. All they have left is a unit of horsemen here attacking my bow samurai. I had bow samurai up on these cliffs here providing supporting uh, fire throughout the entire ambush in a position which was relatively unassailable except for a little column at the front which the enemy's Takeda, uh, the enemy cavalry sorry, are now taking the advantage of. These Naginata horsemen are hacking down at the bow samurai however we have the positional advantage and we have Yari samurai crushing in from the back. The enemy turns to try and engage with my Yari Samurai, but they are 
really in trouble now because they actually can't get through them. They're just getting bogged down and as a result they are all being killed before they can escape. The battle is over for them and the battle is over for the Takeda. It's a decisive victory for Oda forces. We've destroyed the Takeda army and any survivors are going to be routing off the field and they definitely won't be taking part in the siege assault that Takeda Nobushige was planning to do immediately after the reinforcements arrive. So a great victory. Now Takeyama's army, the survivors anyway, can move on to support Kinori inside the castle and try and destroy that Takeda force once and for all. Let's see how that goes. First we need to look at the battle results from that ambush. The Oda forces lost quite a few men just because the Takeda forces were so heavy that we had to take some losses in order to take them down. So now Nobushige's assault on the castle and Matsumoto begins and he's in a little bit of trouble because his reinforcement army is gone and instead he's facing an Oda reinforcement army so he's going to have to take the castle whilst being attacked from the rear by Takeyama's surviving members of the ambushing party. Let's go and find out how that goes for him. Good, everyone's in position. Once my men have them all engaged, we can send Yoshinobu in to finish them off. What? Yoshinobu approaches flying the Oda banner. Perhaps he used it as a ruse to bypass some Oda rebels. Let me see. Where are his horses? I can't see a single horse, just huge blocks of infantry. All marching with the Sashimono of Oda. Impossible, no! This can't be! First Division, fall back to the rear guard! Wipe them out! So here we are on the inside of the castle. The Oda defenders are making ready to defend against the Takeda army. They've spread themselves over the two wings of the castle and with the reserve in the center. Here's the Takeda's army. The vanguard is moving up on horseback at the front. Whilst back here, we can see Takeyama's Oda reinforcements storming onto the field. Now, it should have been Takeda reinforcements in uh, the enemy commander Takeda Nobushige's original plan, but instead he's going to have to deal with this situation. He has his men surrounding the castle and attacking from all sides, which means he doesn't have many men close by to deal with this incursion by the Oda forces. I form up Takeyama's army with spearmen at the front, seeing as the majority of the Takeda army in the area are cavalrymen. One such regiment of cavalry starts riding up towards Takeyama's formation, but then halts and decides to dismount for some reason. Wasn't 100% sure what they were trying to do, perhaps thinking that they on foot would be able to defeat the Oda. But anyway, the rest of their cavalry comes in, realises what's going on, and decides to charge the Oda position. However, I rush forward spearmen to the front ranks at once, and these enemy cavalry are charging right into a wall of spears and you can see their charge just completely halts because their horses refuse to charge through the ranks when there's so many spears pointing out at them. So now the enemy's cavalry have been bogged down amongst all of these Oda spearmen and are starting to get completely annihilated as the Oda just smash them off their horses and kill the horses themselves with their spears. The enemy piled three or four units of cavalry into this engagement however none of them are going to be able to get through this massive hulk of spearmen defending the uh, softer back ranks of this small odor army. So let's have a quick look at what's going on back up at the castle. All of the rest of the Takeda divisions that were attacking all around the castle are still going ahead with their attack and you can see they're just about getting inside the castle at this point. In many places I actually gave them command of the walls and allowed them to get in in order to make them run into a spear wall or to break up their formation. This is one of the cases. You can see they're trying to get in but there is back here a spear wall which is advancing towards the wall and basically we're just going to crush the enemy against the walls with the spear wall which will mean the enemy's men keep coming up into the castle rather than being outside and having an opportunity to retreat but they'll always get killed as they come in. It's the best way to maximally destroy an army when you have an advantage like this. So now we're back outside with Takeyama's force. You can see more heavy cavalry have engaged the spear units and are being cut down. They still have cavalry reserves that have not engaged. We'll see what they do later. Here we can see that the Takeda's men inside the castle are taking heavy losses. They're trying to break through this spear wall, but there are just so many troops backing it up that there's no way they're going to succeed. So these men are being cut down by spears, and those that aren't are being killed by the swordsmen that are hiding in between the spear tips. There's a whole bunch of Takeda men back here as well. You can see this little building was providing a focal point for the Takeda army. They were coming around the back of this building, which was bad for them because it meant the majority of their troops were not actually in combat. My lord, a glorious victory will soon be yours! 
We get an announcement there saying a glorious victory will soon be ours, which is good news. Here, the enemy, perhaps seeing their defeat, charged the rest of their reserves down into Takayama's army. You can see there was a massive cavalry charge there, a very fast charge from those light Naganata horsemen. One of my units of Oda Yari Ashigaru took the brunt at the front there. However, it's not going to be enough to break through all of those men. And here, Takara Nobushike himself comes down to join the battle. Takayama Munayuri, our general, moves up to start engaging with him. And of course the spearmen are going to support him, so Nobushige is in trouble. The rest of Takada's reserve, which were waiting up here, decide to begin their attack on the castle at this point. But it's too late, all the men who were trying to attack the castle before are dead, so all that awaits them inside the castle is death. Now all that's left is a small pocket of Takada resistance. I'm using some arrows to cover the advance of General Takagara Kinori inside the castle, who's rushing his bodyguard forward to finish off the last dregs of the Takada forces inside the castle and his bodyguards slice through those Takara men like they're nothing. Very good performance from <laughs> Kiyonori and his men. Now they're all going to pile in against the last remnants of the force. A few samurai who were refusing to give up uh, back inside the castle. Outside the castle you can see all of Takara's cavalry have been destroyed. Apart from one here, look, it's Takara Nobushige himself is fighting on in amongst all of these Oda troops. He's so deep, there's no way he can escape. And then I think that one of the, ta the, uh, the Oda, sorry, Light Cavalry came in and managed to take him out. So Takana Nobushige is dead, a state also held by all of his troops. There are a few survivors up here in the castle, but you can see they're being routed and slaughtered by the Oda men who now vastly outnumber them inside uh, the Tenchu area here. And so it's a decisive victory for the Oda forces, perhaps what we could have expected even before the battle began, because we had such an advantage. But anyway, this means that Matsumoto Castle is safe, and North Shinano in general is uh, a little bit safer from Takara Invasion. Let's head back to the map and see what the Takara have left. You hear that, Nobuyuki? Your family has just made itself a name that will ring in history. The Takara armies have been crushed by your father, brother, and their generals. But you know that now the burden of a hero is going to be put on you, as the youngest of the Oda men. To stand out, you must exceed even the achievements of your brother, Nobunaga. He conquered Kenai, but he did not take the capital. To best his fame, perhaps that is the goal you should set yourself. So here are the battle results from that siege defense. You can see that Kinori's army actually lost a couple of units defending against those Takada, but they were only garrison units, which means they can be replaced for free. Takayama's army still appearing pretty healthy, but of course it took casualties during the ambush, so it looks like both armies could use a turn or two to start recovering their numbers after this section of the war. So the Takada remnants appear to go and gather up on the east side of North Shinano, not 100% sure what they're doing. As we reach the next turn, Oda Nobuyuki, the new son of Oda Nobuhide, comes of age, I think he's 17. We also get a mission. Uh, the mission is called Proof of Might. Basically, it's to kill any enemy general in battle. It's annoying that I received this now because I've killed three or four enemy generals very recently. Takayama has been given the trait of Brave for his uh, action during that war with the Takayama just now. So that's pretty good for Takayama. It increases the morale of his troops. So here are the remaining Takata forces. They have a huge and fairly heavy army still sitting there in North Shinano. So even after these recent victories, we still have a very serious Takara force to deal with, and of course we don't know what they have down there in Kai and their other provinces. So here's Nobuyuki, he's very loyal to begin with, which is good news. I was thinking I'm just going to leave him there in Owari for a bit to build up an army, and basically use them as a response force to any future crisis. You can see the troops in Owari have a little icon on their troop cards, which means they have bonus armor due to the infrastructure I've built there. Now I'm moving Nobunaga up with a new army from the uh, the recent victors at South Shinano to travel up to North Shinano and help out in this war against the Takada. Once Nobunaga arrives, we'll have a really good numerical advantage and we'll hopefully be able to end the war very quickly in our favor. Now, the next thing I need to do is make some strategic decisions about what to do with all these Takada armies in our territory. Obviously, we have some big armies here too, so we can actually displace or even defeat at least a couple of them. First, I considered sending out Kiyonori's army, but then I thought I might as well bring Takayama down as well to reinforce him in this battle, just to really smash the balance of power onto our side. This means um, the Oda forces will take almost no losses in this fight, 
uh, because it's an auto resolve with the balance of power so heavily on the Oda side. So we're going to do that quickly. So that's uh, eight Takada units there, dealt with quite easily by the uh, 40 Oda units. And there we go, took a few losses, particularly in one of those long Yariashigaru units, but we're actually okay. That's that Takada army dealt with. So now the road to Kai has been cleared up, and as a result of the victory, Kiyonori's leveling up to rank 3, which is pretty cool. I'm sending those Ashigaru back to the castle to garrison it because the public order is getting a bit low. They're a little bit annoyed about the whole war going on in their province, so we need to keep the peace with a few troops around just so no one tries any crime, etc. Now my local ninja, I'm moving down once again towards Kai to try and research just what sort of strength attack I have down here, and it looks like they have another massive and heavy army uh, waiting by their capital, which is extremely outrageous. The capital itself doesn't really have any troops in it, just their new daimyo and another member of the Takada clan. But still, I couldn't really believe that they had another massive army down here after defeating. It must have been at least three stacks of troops so far. So anyway, I had to keep this in mind. Uh, they actually have a Metsuke embedded in that army, which again means I can't keep my ninja too close to them because the Metsuke might try and make an arresting move on him, so I've moved my ninja out of the way. So now that I know the Takada actually have greater strength than me in this area because they have two heavy armies I have one heavy and one light army um, they have slightly greater strength so I'm adopting a defensive posture which wasn't something I thought I would have to do during this turn so you can see I'm moving some of my troops there into an ambushing position I also noticed here there's a statue uh, I believe the statue is commemorating the Oda victory over the Takeda in the last turn uh, defeating their forces in the ambush and then defeating them in the siege battle. So that's quite nice that the uh, the local people are quite happy <laughs> at our very glorious victory over the Takada. So I've embedded my agents in my forces there and I'm now just going to wait and see what the Takada do. And here's what they're doing. They're sending one army around the top of the mountains of North Shinano basically to come down the road towards North Shinano's castle from the north, I assume. But now it's winter, they're going to be suffering winter attrition doing that route around the top there. So that's their problem. And uh, of course now Nobunaga can come into this theatre and begin to influence things with his very heavy army. Nobunaga being here tips the balance of p power towards us because we now have pretty much equal... Well Takayama and Nobunaga's forces are a match for the Takeda forces and then Kiyonori's extra army tips the balance just about in our favour. So here you can see I'm moving Nobunaga up to an ambushing position just north of Matsumoto Castle. This is just to have him laying in wait for those Takada forces which look like they're gonna come around the north side. Basically it means we've uh, put them in check, they won't be able to come down and take North Shinano sneakily whilst the other two armies do things. Now I've moved my ninja into the forest here because during the end turn sequence I definitely saw two Takada armies go and hide in the forest just beside the road there but my ninja for some reason was not able to find them so perhaps I didn't really see them, perhaps they moved I don't know, you can go back and look at that end turn sequence again I think something definitely moved in there so I was kind of suspicious I think they were going to try and ambush me by drawing me down into Kai. So I decided to just ignore Kai for this turn yet again. I'm moving my ninja back to the settlement. This establishes a spy network which allows me to see further out of my borders. I can see some Yamanuchi lands up there and some Hatakiyama lands up there. So yes, I'm moving Kiyonori back as well. So we're going to have the, all three of our armies sitting by the castle, all hidden from the Takeda. Basically just waiting to see whether the Takeda will move forward. I can't believe the scout reports, but I have no reason to think them wrong. The Takeda still have more armies. It seems as if the Takeda have been pressing their whole able-bodied population into military service. It is a shame that so many noble people must thus fall before our blades. But we should not shoulder the burden. It is the Takeda who brought death to their people, not us. They started this war and they continue to fight it. All I can do is adopt the way of the true strategist and try to win without fighting. Now my last action in this turn was to move some extra reinforcements from South Shinano towards North Shinano. Nobuhide's force down there doesn't really need the extra troops now that North Shinano is the battlefront, so I started moving them up. Um, just in case I need them, essentially. And so with that, it was time to end the turn. Let's move into the spring. Essentially, we're just going to have to watch and see what the Takada do. 
Although first we're going to have to see all these Shimazu naval movements. The Shimazu are really dominating the waters of West Japan with loads of giant navies. They seem to be in a large war with the Amako clan, which is a fairly large clan in central Japan. But anyway, we'll have to worry about that later because that's not really our theatre. Back here on the battlefront, the Takeda are moving about. They've moved their army that was going around to the north back towards the crossroads on the southern side of the province. So back into the sort of immediate battlefront between North Shinano and Kai. So once the end turn sequence is over, we get to see a couple of the Takeda armies. It looks like it's not as many troops as I thought would be in there. I definitely saw one and a half stacks go into hiding there. So now we're able to see half a stack, so it's possible that the, the big one stack I was thinking of is somewhere still hidden and we don't know about it. Regardless, it looks like the next phase of the war with the Takeda is about to begin. New armies have arisen and we're more prepared for them than ever. We'll find out how it goes on the next Oda episode. That's all for this episode. Join me next time where we'll be seeing the Takara go on the warpath to try and catch up with the Oda in this race to conquer Japan. That's next time on the Eternal Law.